This is quite possibly one of the most hyped phones of the year, the Pixel 6 Pro. And for good reason, Google has been making a lot of claims over the past month about how powerful their new Tensor chip is and how insanely good the new camera hardware is. Plus there's the fact that we haven't really seen a flagship phone from Google since the Pixel 4 back in 2019. This isn't gonna be my full review. I still have to do some more testing before I can give you my final thoughts about it, but I've been playing with it for a couple of days now and I do have some stuff that I wanna get off my chest. First of all, before we get to any of the important stuff, let me just say this. I did not like this design all that much when we saw the first leaks come out, but now that it's here in my hands, wow, this is one of the best looking phones released this year easily. This sort of sunny yellow color is perfectly matched to the fall season and I love it. The camera bar is definitely polarizing, but I've warmed up to it a lot. I think it's very unique and distinctive, something that we definitely need in the smartphone world right now. Now let's get on to the more important stuff. So far, I've been pretty impressed with the Pixel 6 Pro. It's early days as far as early impressions go, but this is shaping up to be the most refined Pixel that Google has ever made. There aren't nearly as many quirks as I've had with other Pixels, and it doesn't have nearly as many compromises either. I have found a few things that bug me though, like the speakers. The 6 Pro technically does have stereo speakers, but they're not that great. The earpiece speaker at the top lacks low end and I find it ends up sounding like the music coming from the bottom speaker is louder, so it messes with the stereo imaging. Everything else related to hardware has been either good or fantastic. The new 6.7 inch display is nice and sharp at 1440p and runs at 120 hertz for maximum smoothness. Nice. It's also an LTPO panel that can throttle from 10 hertz all the way up to 120, which should give us a little bit of an edge in battery life. It's a very good looking display. I'm one of those people that generally don't like these curved edge waterfall displays, but I think this is one of the few phones that I'll I'll let it slide on. It just looks really good with this unique design and I haven't run into any problems with accidental touches yet, so it's fine. Gone is last year's polycarbonate back. It has Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and back this year, which certainly feels more premium, but I doubt it's an improvement to durability given that it is glass. It's also pretty slippery without a case too, given that it is a glossy finish. You might have noticed that there's no fingerprint reader back here, and that's because Google has opted to match the competition this year and stick one underneath the glass on the front of the display. I will say that it isn't the fastest in-display reader that I've seen, but I mean, it works well enough. It seems like Google has learned their lesson from the horrible battery life on the Pixel 4 too, because they stuck a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery in here that can charge at a faster 30 watts. I'll have to do more testing to see if that leads to good battery life though, because given that Google has stuck their own custom SOC in here, I have no idea if it's gonna be energy efficient or just be a complete power hog. Tensor is the custom SOC's name and Google ain't playing around anymore. Even though I did have faith that Google's engineers would be able to whip up a solid SOC, there was still a little bit of worry in the back of my mind that they wouldn't be able to pull it off, so I'm very happy to report that it's been solid for me so far. I've encountered very few issues other than a few minor bugs, which could be just chalked up to early release software. It stands toe to toe with the other smartphones like the S21 Ultra I mentioned, my OnePlus 9 Pro, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I did some gaming on the 6 Pro too, and again, Tensor performed very well in games like Call of Duty Mobile and CSR Racing too. The phone definitely did get a little bit warm, but I mean, that's normal for any phone under load, and I wasn't seeing any frame drops on any of the games that I played. And then there's the cameras. There's three on the back of the Pro, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 50 megapixel wide, and a 48 megapixel 4X telephoto. This is the first year in quite a while that Google has moved away from their beloved IMX 363 sensor, and I was super excited to see what the new hardware could do. Again, it's early days, but I have been impressed with the images coming out of this camera so far. Photos have plenty of contrast and detail in them, and as usual, I love how the Pixel deals with color most of the time. I'm a bit disappointed with the wideness, or I guess lack of wideness rather, of the ultra-wide camera though. It's wider than the standard camera, but not by much. When compared to the 13 Pro Max's ultra-wide, it's just not as impressive from a field of view standpoint. But the 6 Pro definitely beats the iPhone when it comes to dynamic range. It retains more detail both in the highlights of the sky and the shadows across the image. Let me know if you wanna see a full video comparing the Pixel 6 Pro's cameras to the iPhone 13 Pro. One of my favorite new features of the 6 Pro is what Google calls Magic Eraser. This is super cool and actually extremely useful. I took this photo yesterday and it's a great photo, but I really don't want these people walking their dog in the frame. So let's make them disappear. Wow, that sounds terrible out of context. Anyway, all I have to do is go into Tools, Edit, and then hit Magic Eraser. 
Google will try and get rid of what it thinks you want gone, but if it picks the wrong thing or it just misses something like this little dog, you can just tap and drag on the thing you want to erase and then hit erase all. It's not perfect, but unless you're looking for mistakes, you're probably not going to find them. It does a crazy good job for something that only needs just a split second to process. You can get rid of just about anything like this eyesore of a garbage can in front of the train. Again, not perfect, but if you didn't know there used to be a garbage can here, you probably wouldn't have noticed any errors. You wanna know what the best thing about the 6 and the 6 Pro is though? The pricing of them this year. The Pixel 6 is 600 bucks and the Pixel 6 Pro is 900. These phones are very aggressively priced given what you get. And even though Pixel phones haven't sold all that well in the past, I think these are gonna do a lot better this year. Like I said though guys, my full review is coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already to be notified when that video drops. Hope you liked the video, thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.